Okay. <clears throat> this is try number two. And I'm trying, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm definitely struggling with trying to figure out what to put and what not to. <clears throat> but this is a video on my testimony. And hopefully it will help guide others through difficult things. <clears throat> Uh, you never know what to add, but I would ask God to lead me and guide me to what he wants me to put in here. <clears throat> he knows everything. Um, he knows every thought, every action, everything we've... <clears throat> um, he knows everything we do. <clears throat> but let me start out by saying I grew up in the church. I was baptized in the church. Went to church every Sunday without fail. Um was in a way forced to go to uh, the children's Bible study and it was all about like crafts and we learned different stories and and I just kind of did did that thing I mean it was just like I don't know I guess weekend school kind of thing um, and I, I don't recall um, very much, um, but I, I do remember going and having different people <clears throat> talk about God and different stories and <clears throat> um, trying to flip through to various bo books of the Bible and <clears throat> um, and I also got involved in Vespers and it was mainly about the games, I mean we had a lot of crazy games like silly bat games and we went uh, to skating and bowling and um, that was always fun and we played um, capture the flag, which I had a blast in, <clears throat> and we sang and did all that kind of thing, <clears throat> and that's where my where the relationship started. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I did, um, I what was that called? Um, the middle school thing. I can't think of their name. <clears throat> um, but I went through like oh confirmation class. That's what it was called. <clears throat> but I did that and had a mentor and basically it was a way of joining the church, if you will, um, a little bit better and understanding. <clears throat> and I guess it was our sex, uh, sex, uh, S-E-C-T-S, -S, not the other, other word, um, our church way of life, I guess, uh, was confirmation. And so I went through confirmation middle school and had to remember different verses and we talked about psalm, different psalms and <clears throat> remembering different bible verses and I've never been very I mean up until this very day I've never been very good at memorizing what so and so verse says I know from reading the bible what it does and doesn't say um, and I can definitely <clears throat> Well, now I, I mean, it's now I can definitely say that this book or that book says this, um, but I still can't quote like, oh, well, Romans eight one says blah blah blah. Um, so, but <clears throat> so I went through confirmation in middle school, um, and life was I don't know. Um, growing up, I. Um, went to the beach every summer. Um, I went to Camp um, Carolina um, and had a blast. I mean, we we had fun. Uh, went canoeing and kayaking, and climbing, and it was that was one of my favorite times and camps to go to. Um, and it was I don't know, a good way to get go out and. <clears throat> do different things and I guess it made me I don't know appreciate the outdoors <clears throat> and my mom was always um, taking us on fun outings and adventures <clears throat> all over the US um, but <clears throat> my dad would I don't know take me for a month at a time <clears throat> and I remember growing up and going to his meetings throughout, I mean, I had I have vague recollections now, but I mean, I would go to these meetings and be forced to stay in a motel um, 
I don't remember what we did. We had all kinds of different things, I guess, and we played toys and whatever. Well, he went to meetings all day, um, and then we'd play <clears throat> on certain different times and go to like SeaWorld or <clears throat> to Disney World and these other places. And <clears throat> um, for a little while, he was in the same town, and then he went and <clears throat> moved to, what is it, Little Rock? But he was one of those like jet setter types that was never in one, uh, <clears throat> in a place very long. Um, <clears throat> so, um, so I grew up with him taking off, and there were many times when he would tell me he was coming and never never came. Um, <clears throat> there were times when I was looking forward to something and it never happened. <clears throat> he was not. Um, growing up, I never really, um, <clears throat> had someone <clears throat> show me how to do cars. Um, I grew up going to scouts and that type of thing. <clears throat> and growing up with, I guess, those were my father figures and went through Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts and had fun and did different projects and different things and stayed with it and... Um, I, I eventually got my Eagle Scout. Um, well, right when I was turning 18, I went to Eagle Board Review. And it was basically like if I didn't get it at that point, I would never have gotten it. Um, but that's getting a little ahead of myself. <coughs> but I grew up, um, I don't know, going all over the place. And it felt like my dad was buying me off a lot of times because we'd buy like ski gear or different things. Or uh, he'd buy like extravagant trips going to who knows where <clears throat> um i grew up um coming to the beach like i said earlier and we uh, my uncle lived on uh was uh, oklatney river and that was fun um going over there i mean we'd go jet skiing and that type of thing i know my my childhood just sounds so horrible um when I went through school, um, I was constantly bullied and harassed. Um, I stayed back in first grade, um, and um, I was, well, at that point, I was made fun of because, oh, well, well you're held back, or uh, you're you're too big for your age, or you're fat, and I mean, I was never the <laughs> the dresser that was like I always never fit in and wore. <laughs> I think I wore like sweatpants a lot and things that didn't really, I don't know, weren't the in thing, I guess, at the time. Um, but I, I don't know. I had my own whatever. Um, I did spend a lot of time over at my grandmother's um, just um, eating way too many sweets. I'm shocked that I don't have diabetes. Uh, with the amount of sweets that I ate, um, I was a fat little kid. And I guess that was my way, if I, looking back at it, of handling situations. Um, that was my way of, I guess, handling life. <clears throat> and it was, I don't know, it, very addictive, and it still is to this day. I still have a major sweet tooth. <clears throat> but that was my childhood in a nutshell. <clears throat> um, went to Camp Seagull uh, when I was in my teens. <clears throat> and I was one of the first people in my high school class that got a car, got a Jeep Cherokee, and <clears throat> was basically driving by the time I was a freshman. <clears throat> Needless to say, I was the one driving people to um, to crew every day. Well, I did crew in the for four years in in high school, um, and went off to meets um, like every month or every sometimes it was almost a meet every weekend <clears throat> but we did like 12 to 15 a year <clears throat> and um i would i went from being a fat chubby kid to um uh, basically running everyone um and cheering on everyone i was um i don't know why i did it but i <clears throat> i was constantly helping others um I don't know if it was my way of fitting in <clears throat> or why I did it. Um, 
I guess I, I mean, I'm part of it, I mean, maybe I didn't fit in and <clears throat> didn't want to talk to people and didn't feel like, um, I don't know, I was, I don't know, a weirdo, I guess. <clears throat> but I was always, I was, um, the most improved novice and then I was, um, like, I got two or three captain's awards and the Dubois award almost every year because I would uh, get everyone's oars for them and help them out with their boats launching. And this was all day long. Like when I went to a meet, I was like, go, 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 go. And we did the thing. And then when I got home, I remember cr like every time crashing and just sleeping uh, for long periods of time because I was just ex exhausted. <clears throat> so, um, so yeah, um, <clears throat> but I tried, to, I mean, at that point, I mean, I was a fat kid growing up and teased and harassed and <clears throat> I, I don't know, spent a lot of time, <clears throat> uh, going to, um, um, friends' houses and playing the Nintendo or Sega or different systems. Um, yes, I grew up with the entertain, uh, like gaming systems and. I don't know, that was my way of just, I don't know, having fun. <clears throat> uh, occasionally bike in the neighborhood, <clears throat> but I don't know how relevant that is. Um, <clears throat> I guess I'm just trying to give you a good idea as to what my childhood was like. <clears throat> I never was good with the girls. Um, I tried dating in middle school and was made fun of and was set up um, a couple of times by people that I thought were my friends and it turned out that the girl didn't like me and I was harassed and whatever. Um, I don't know. I, I had a different impression about how people thought of me, I guess. I guess I was gullible um, and wanted to believe that people actually cared about me and wanted to know who I was and that a lot of times turned out false. <clears throat> um, I was told told by family it's like oh you're you're blah 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 I mean you're pretty or not pretty handsome and uh, you're doing a lot of good things and uh, the reaction from the world was not a pretty one. <laughs> um, so um, I don't know. I was questioning myself a lot. <clears throat> um, in high school, at my <clears throat> I went to Montreat, and that I think was a changing moment in my Christian walk. <clears throat> I um, went there, and it became real to me. Uh, finally, I mean, we did <clears throat> like singing, and like I could. I don't know, I guess in a way I started feeling God and, and it was just something different, um, something had changed <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> so I mean and we talked about masks and I felt, I, I mean I've, I've always worn masks <clears throat> and hide, um, hid my true person that I was because I thought that I needed to act a certain way or be a certain way in order to fit in. <clears throat> and I do have a goofy side, but no one has seen it. Um, but I, I do have masks, and a lot of times it was to hide the pain <clears throat> of not fitting in and rejection from <clears throat> from women, from the outside world, um, and just not really fitting in. <clears throat> and I think that's the reason why I kept like trying to do the most I could and <clears throat> be there for my teammates, because I thought that was my way of fitting in and um, I don't know looking back at it I don't know if I was like laughed at on the side um, I don't know I never did try to fit in <laughs> um, but Montreal was a turning point in my Christian walk um, when I got back I was um, serious and wanted and got into the Bible a lot more um, and tried to stay the course <clears throat> but I was being worldly um, for quite a while um, 
up until actually recently, or relatively recently. <clears throat> and then, um, <clears throat> so that was high school. Um, went to Montreat for a couple of different summers because I liked it, enjoyed like learning about God, and it just felt real. And I um, just my Christian walk blossomed at that point, and <clears throat> we had some fun and. Um, um, but then I went off to college and joined, I guess, different clubs and groups and trying to fit in. And, um, my first roommate was pretty cool over the summer. I mean, I, I got there in the summer and he was pretty cool and we got along well and we respected each other and kind of gave each other space. <clears throat> and um, but I did get into the bar scene and drinking and <clears throat> found out that while I was on liquor I opened up a lot more um, and tried to just date and dance and I was I guess trying to fit in at that point and <clears throat> dating never accomplished I, I never went anywhere um, with women I always felt rejected by them <clears throat> and like I I don't know, like I had something majorly wrong with me, and I didn't understand why. I still, to this day, don't understand why. <clears throat> um, but, um, so I, I went to the club scene, and, um, I don't know, got into things I shouldn't have gotten into. Um, and, <clears throat> um, I was part of, was it, the Presbyterian group, and, um, then became involved in Wesley and in Campus Crusade for Christ and um, yet again got um, involved in volunteering and um, found a decent group of people and just wanted to, I, I don't know why I did it, I, but I volunteered and tried to help and tried, I guess, trying to live a Christian life and um, I did enjoy um, being the hands and feet of God, if you will, and I, I, I did feel the spirit move when I was singing and whatever, I mean, I could, I know it felt good, I mean, it felt different, and, um, but at that point, I mean, what I was doing was leading a double life, like I'd go and um, be a part of go to these different club meetings with Campus Crusade and the Presbyterian group and um, Wesley and like volunteer and um, sh like pretend to be a Christian and then when I go got home I a lot of times um, well not a lot of times most of the time got on the computer on chat rooms and dating websites and um, porn sites and other things. I'm not proud of this, but um, I jerked off a lot. Um, I um, masturbated and all that good stuff. Well, not good stuff, bad stuff. <clears throat> and I led a double life for a very, very long time. Um, I'd show people one side of me and then um, I guess the internet allowed me to be more open and I didn't feel like I fit in <clears throat> when it came to the world. Um, I was extremely shy because of being bullied and whatever. So I didn't have the guts to walk up to women at that point anymore and, <clears throat> um, and ask them out. Um, so that was my way of trying to meet people um, and, I don't know, I guess I, I met a few and we interacted and it went good for a little bit and then it went south. Um, <clears throat> in 2000, yeah, in the year 2000, I, <clears throat> my parents didn't think I would do it, but I went over to Australia on a study abroad. <clears throat> it was actually, believe it or not, way cheaper to go over there and uh, go study abroad than it was to uh, go out of state here. So I took that advantage and went over there and 
just about every weekend I went somewhere or every other weekend I went somewhere I went to Cairns I went to Ayers Rock and I went to um, to the Bungle Bungles of uh, Northern um, Australia and then I went to um, like Rottnest Island and Dove the Great Barrier Reef and all, all kinds of stuff and um, I drank myself silly uh, it's where I celebrated my 21st birthday um, and also <clears throat> another thing that I'm not proud of um, I because of not fitting in and I was majorly deceived uh, by the devil and I wanted to feel what it was like to be with a woman and thought that my only way of doing it was to pay someone and you know where this is going um, so I did um, and actually I did it several times I'm not proud of this at all um, and I hate that I did it. I wish I could go back and erase this, but I can't. Um, but I paid women to have sex. Um, I hate that I did it. I wish I'd never done it. Um, and I hope, I hope to God that I don't go to hell over it. Um, but that's life. <clears throat> um, and so I went to Australia and, um, God was not, I mean, well, actually, I mean, God was nowhere around. I mean, I didn't, I was not in the Bible. There were no churches to go to. I tried to find them, and there were non-existent. Um, there were no groups on campus. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, I came back and changed my major from veterinary to wildlife science and um, just kept going to clubs and continuing to do the wrong thing um, and doing exactly what I mean what I've been doing the whole time um, 2002 I went to um, on a mission trip to Ecuador and um, and that was really nice and it opened my eyes because I was in an, um, we built a dorm room for, um, for future missionaries to come there and provide a sustainable agricultural place. <coughs> and, um, <coughs> so, yeah. Um, but we taught the first Bible, um, vacation Bible school. <clears throat> and um, and I will say that during college, there were times when I I had had it with my I I didn't know at that time what was leading me down these sexual roads <clears throat> and why I was doing it, and I was um, and there was one point where I was able to stop myself for um, about eight months. <clears throat> then I went back. And I went, I mean, so I, I did this yo-yoing where I'd stop for a few months and then go back, then stop for a few more months and then go back. Um, was But I was never able to completely stop and I hated myself for it. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't stop. I, I, I just, it was not in my power. I wanted to. Um, on one hand, I was in church and trying to learn about God and singing and having time a good time and <clears throat> but there was a part of me missing and the devil was lying to me I mean it was um <clears throat> the devil had me um I mean if you look at tv and everything else I mean it's pushing a sexualized culture I mean and it's pushing oh well you should be with a woman and and you should uh I mean when you're dating you should have sex with her and that type of thing and that's bogus um but um but I was I was trying to draw closer to God I was trying to <clears throat> read the word and grow closer and I was at, I guess um kind of I mean I was trying to read the Bible and go to these groups and do the Christian thing I guess and 
and making up for it. And, and the mission um, definitely opened my eyes and we did that and I saw how people were in poverty and uh, wanted to do more. <clears throat> so I did. Um, I tried to volunteer more and <clears throat> do different things and we did a men's ministry for uh, for a group of, um, what, what do you call it? Um, not like halfway house, um, like a men's transitional shelter, I guess, would be a way of, and saw how men were dealing with drugs and sex and all that, um, and <clears throat> it felt nice to, I mean, be around people that were genuine and, <clears throat> and singing about God and trying to praise Him, and, um, <clears throat> but yeah, um, and then when I got out, well, I didn't get out of college, um, I, I had a hemorrhoid issue, and so I ended up, uh, because of it, dropping out of college and ending up in my dad's and stepmom's place, um, and he found out that I had been talking to, to women, um, and actually I, at that point, had started talking to transgender women, <laughs> um, and um, he went ballistic and destroyed the computer, um, which I understand. Um, and but I lost connection with um, with a with one or two that I thought may go somewhere and that we had a connection with, but I'll never know. Um, well, maybe in heaven I may know. Um, but I had met someone that we'd been chatting for quite a while and. Um, but that connection was, was lost after I, after he did that, which was probably a good thing. And, and I was, um, I don't know, I, I don't know if I would call it a come to Jesus moment, but I was basically, um, was the intervention with my mom and brother, dad, and, and they're, they're asking me why I was doing what I was doing and. I think I wasn't happy with myself and trying to figure out who I was and um, didn't like how I <clears throat> had dropped out of school um, and had all this stuff happen and I wasn't leading the right life and I was still going to church which I find interesting but I was leading a double life uh, I was doing the church life but then jerking off and trying to meet women and everything else uh, on the side. Um, I was tempted to, I don't know, I have approached, well, and I think I was also trying to figure out if I was gay at the time as well. Um, <clears throat> but um, that never happened. I mean, I was, I don't know, very caught up in that sexual world and and I knew at that point that I, I needed to change and have some have have it be different and and how this world was evil and <clears throat> so I stopped trying to approach men. Um, I I did keep up trying to. <clears throat> I was more cautious, I guess, online, and I kept talking to people, and <clears throat> I did end up meeting someone while I was in Atlanta that was a transgender and um, when I met them it just never felt right and it was not what I thought it was going to be um, it didn't I don't know I guess in a way we kind of had sex if you will and um, but it was I don't know it wasn't what I I don't know none of my sexual escapades were were worth it I mean, they're just, I don't know, meaningless flings that never went anywhere. Um, <clears throat> but, um, so I met someone and it didn't go anywhere. And I guess I was, I mean, I, I was trying to, I don't know, I was desperate for loving, for someone to love me and want me the way that I thought I deserved and <clears throat> that never went very far um 
<clears throat> but, um, but I mean, I, and then I went back to school in 2005, um, and finished up and graduated, and then, uh, I mean, I've, I've, I've been bumping around from 2003, um, through college, and then <clears throat> through 2000. Eight. I mean, I've been bumping all over the country, <clears throat> playing the church part as well as, and just trying to figure out who I was. And I mean, I wasn't happy with myself. Um, I was trying to figure out, hey, where, where, where do, where do I want to go? What do I want to do? Um, <laughs> still to this day, I'm still wondering that. Um, I've never really, I don't know. I, I enjoy the outdoors and I enjoy doing camps and nature centers and that type of thing and I enjoy uh, showing nature and to different people and providing programs and I'm good at it and I don't like the in inside business whatever um, I mean I know you have to plan and research and whatever but um, having to be at a computer all day is not my idea of fun um, that's why I stayed clear of business and all that good stuff. It wasn't, it was never been about the money. It's always been about <clears throat> creating, uh, a difference for people around me. <clears throat> but, um, I was, I don't know, for a while, I mean, just going all over, doing different jobs, leaving for stupid reasons. Um, a lot of them were seasonal based. Um... <clears throat> <clears throat> but, um, I don't know, I, I mean, I, I went to church, found churches, and never really fit in, uh, never really found any <clears throat> groups of people, never really had any friends, <clears throat> um, and, um, oh yeah, I did pick up a dog in 2003, uh, Yellow Lab, and he went with me everywhere, and um, I lost a lot of jobs because of him. I mean, I loved him, but he cost me many, many jobs because a lot of jobs that were around required housing. Um, but he was a good, good pooch, um, named Ozzy, and, um, we went all over, um, and had a lot of fun. We went hiking all the time, and did our thing. Um, I mean, I've, I've been on dating websites and <clears throat> I don't know. <clears throat> I mean, I, I knew, I mean, I gave up the porn websites, well, I don't know, the really bad stuff like, oh, watch my webcam and blah, blah, blah. Um, um, what really, I guess, got me because I was able to <clears throat> pretend like I was that person are the stories um, and it was also a way for me to escape reality or has been I mean up until recently I mean it was a way of escaping reality and the pain and the hurt of not being able to fit in and not figuring out who I was and what I was supposed to do <clears throat> so um, the stories were a way of me putting myself in that person's shoes and having what they were doing in the story to happen to me, kind of thing. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I don't know, sorry. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know, I mean, I've struggled with identity, um, I definitely know, I mean, I've always known that I've wanted a woman, or a womanly thing, um, and so I was searching for that, and throughout my adult years, <clears throat> trying, um, to find that, and just bumping all over the U.S., um, helping when I could, um, with family members, and, <clears throat> um, and 2008, I went to my master's school and got my master's in two years. Um, I did a uh, master's project that um, helped an inner city high school 
and um, had a church that I went to, but I still got online when I wasn't in church and in school. I mean, I had all, the school and the master's project took up a lot of time, um, but I still was looking for someone um, <clears throat> um, and found, well, I don't know. I mean, I've had, I guess, flings. I've never really, truly been in love with anyone. Um, I talked to someone, um, I don't remember when, I think early 2000s, and she came over from Scotland, and we had a week or two together, and I thought, I don't know, um, before she came over, I mean, we were talking a lot, and just, um, it never really felt right. It never really was one of those where you wanted to talk for hours and hours and hours. It was, it was one of those where, I don't know, kind of helping each other. <clears throat> um... <clears throat> but, um, and where does God fit in all of this? Um, I mean, I kept going to church. I kept doing that thing. Um, but I led majorly a double life. Um, I pretend like everything was going fine and like everything, like, uh, I mean, I guess my work life was... I mean, I, w I was part of nature centers and different groups. Um, and then I'd moved to whatever. Uh, I've worked as a sporting clay strapper and USDA. And I was in Grand Junction 2007 um, as a US Fish and Wildlife Biologist. Um, and so, um, but yeah, I mean, none of these were ever I mean, they kind of just, I mean, I enjoyed them somewhat, but not, and it was never completely meaningful. <laughs> um, so I went to master school, um, and then after that, I did Lookout Mountain um, Nature Center, <clears throat> and, and then I came home, I think, and trying to figure out yet again um, many times I went uh, back to Florida because I I don't know I was, um, throughout my job's life I was told oh well you need to stay in your field and if you do anything else outside of your field um, it's not going to go over well so I listened to this BS instead of hey I needed a job and to go get a job um, so that didn't happen so I sat around for a lot of time and um, had way too much free time on my hands and did some things that, um, I should, well, I went to parks and that type of thing, but I also used that time to explore online, if you know what I mean. Um, but, um, 2011, I went to West Virginia and, um, I listened to Carrie Shook's, um, starting to, um, he, I don't know, it just spoke to me, and I, I was in a job where I stayed for two and a half years, and, um, I was able to stop, um, having escapades outside of work, if you know what I mean, um, to myself, um, for a while, um, because... I thought I had met someone who meant a lot, and turned out it didn't go the way I was hoping. Don't know what happened there, but um, but I was, um, but I wanted to stop because I knew I needed to at that point, um, and so I stopped for like I think it was eight or nine months, maybe ten months, and then it just when I saw that she wasn't coming back, it just I yeah. Um, I went back to it because I was hurting so much that so I was trying to have an escape route um, um, but I was doing a lot of amazing programs and going to church and uh, I wanted to volunteer and be more part of church and joined a, a Bible study 
before church and went to church and, um, and that was, I don't know, a good thing and, um, I don't know, I mean, at this point, you probably think that, I mean, I mean, I mean, the masturbation was something that I was fighting since I was 15, and for a long time, I've wanted to stop. I've, I mean, it was something that I was not proud of. It was something that I knew I needed to stop and control. And I thought I had it control. I was like, oh, I'll just do it once and then that'll be it. It's like, no. Um, but it was my escape route. It was my way of fitting in. It was my way of um, of connecting <laughs> without connecting with a woman. Um, and <clears throat> there were many times um, that I wanted to commit suicide. My, my first one was high school. Um, because I didn't fit in. I, I've never fit in. I've always, um, and then I tried to do it several times, especially when I was in Georgia and other places where I was like, okay, well, I'll just shove this knife in my, in my throat or in my heart and that'll be the end of it. And so I, I never, I mean, I've had knives in my hands and I never could go through with it. I never cut myself, um, um, something was always holding me back um, um, <clears throat> I never did cut my wrist or whatever like you see going on today <clears throat> but um, I don't know I mean I, I I continued going to different jobs and different things <clears throat> um, I don't know why I've had so many jobs I've had like 20 to 30 different jobs and gone to like 20 to 30 different places. I've lived in 13 different states. <clears throat> and I mean, this kept going. Um, I mean, me trying to find connection with someone and <clears throat> and trying to find fulfillment in my life. Um, and so I tried to volunteer for different causes and different things. And, <clears throat> um, and then in 2011, uh, well, no, not 2011, 2017, 18, <clears throat> I <clears throat> was part of the Carrie Shook Church, and um, I think at that point I had stopped masturbating for a little while. I mean, I, I, I was able to control it. Like, what what ha kept happening is, is I'd stop for eight, eight to ten months, and then something would trigger me to go back. Um, and so that process kept going <clears throat> and then um i don't know while i was at that church i felt um god calling me to have an immersive um <clears throat> baptism at that church and so i went through with it and um i thought it was a way of recommitting my life to god and um and i i i, I mean i've always wanted to try to do the right thing and I mean I was with a church that I thought was good and I mean I, I was trying to lead a life pleasing to God and do the right thing um, and then in 2000 in that same year in April there was a I think it was 10 to 12 maybe 14 inches worth of brain dropped on one particular area all at once, like within 30 minutes to an hour and flooded the area. And so for the next month, I um, was ripping out, um, well, I was, I guess, called mucking out a house. So we were ripping, ripping out, um, <clears throat> ripping out house, uh, different pieces of the house and basically taking it down to the studs uh, pretty much, I mean, kind of like what you see here. I mean, it's just like the studs and like the wood parts, like all the insulation and everything had to come out. So, <clears throat> um, so we, um, tried to help owner, homeowners get back on their feet. And, um, and then there was another flood 
like the month later, almost in the same location, slightly different. And so for another month, I was um, volunteering yet again. And um, God has always been working on me, um, but I still kept tripping up on myself um, and going from place to place and never, uh, I was fleeing way too many times. I was never comfortable in my skin. I was never comfortable um, with a job or anything. Um, I guess that was my way of handling situations as I would reject them before they would re reject me. <clears throat> and so I would flee the job or whatever if I felt like it was going south. Um, and I've done that in many jobs. Um, <clears throat> and I wish I could take all of it back. Um, I um, wish I'd never left West Virginia. I wish <clears throat> that I could figure out why my boss, um, after um, I went from Beckley to over to Huntington and that boss, I don't know what I did wrong. I mean, I was making um, events and programs and doing all kinds of, of things and starting different things and then out of nowhere my boss was like oh you're I mean it was like this skating I don't understand what happened but it uh, went from because I was on a probationary period and then it was um, and then like a month later for whatever reason it was completely um, like the most skating I mean I went from like making it and doing a good job and all this good stuff and then all of a sudden like it almost like the devil or someone got a hold of him and turned him um uh, but I will never know what happened um and so it forced me to um to leave um which was painful but getting back to Houston because <clears throat> that was um a turning point I enjoyed being God's hands and feet. I enjoyed um, being there for people and truly talking to people about their faith and um, how God is there for them. And um, and I, I really <clears throat> found enjoyment when I was doing that. I was still <laughs> jerking off and still doing that, but... Um, but it was my way of, I guess, fitting in. Um, <clears throat> but I wasn't, I don't know, I don't know when the dating apps, well, I mean, I've always been on them and trying to find someone. Um, <clears throat> but it seemed like something over those years had changed from, I mean, from just, I don't know. It seemed like something inside of me had realized I wanted to change. Um, and God had been working on me, um, but I enjoyed ripping out ha um, walls and um, doing that. And I was called a beast because of I would just get in there and keep working until it got done. And um, I, I did a good job, and I was trying to do what I felt led to do. Um, and I can't remember if it was that summer or what, but I I guess I was working in the um, in the bed, and um, this idea came in to my mind, and so I went inside and wrote it all down, and it was this long um, thing about how I wanted my own <clears throat> property and um, how I was going to make it into a ministry place where. I was welcoming people and I would have nature pieces and hands-on stuff and all this other, oops, sorry, all this other stuff. Um, and, um, I don't know. Um, and so I thought that that's what I was supposed to do. So I was trying to, at that point, make it happen. Um, and, oh, 2014, um, so, Houston was like 2017, 2018. So in 2014, I was in Minnesota, um, <laughs> stupidly uh, living, basically um, completely lost. Um, I was at the end of my rope. I was living in my car. Um, 
I knew that I wanted to change. I knew that I needed to do something different. And I had just been fired from the Huntington job. And I thought, hey, well, Minnesota, I'm, I had a, a potential job interview. So I went up there and um, tried to make it work and um, tried to wait out the interview and that type of thing and found out that it was never going to happen. Um, my dad was living up there at the time and they were claiming that there was a job with the uh, nursing assistant home that they were working in. Um, and I was being pulled along for about two months <clears throat> and God was definitely, he, he was unhappy with me, but he showed that he was there by providing funds. Um, he knew I wanted to change and he, he's was working on me and I was, I was broken. I mean, I, I was just basically trying to listen. I mean, there were times when I'd just go to a park and just listen, and um, I don't remember if I was in the Word that much. <coughs> I do, I had like little readers, like uh, Bible devotional guides, and I would, um, ever since like 2012, 2013, I'd read them and get a lot of out of them, and trying to live the Christian way, and trying to do different things, but I kept getting sidetracked with my sexual issues um, because I didn't fit in and um, didn't know how to fill that void um, so <clears throat> um, so I mean I came up with the idea of a mobile trailer um, and had an idea and I brought it to Florida and tried to make it work here in Florida and uh, trying to work with state parks and different people and um, tried to get out there with uh, homeschool and these other groups and it never got off the ground. Why, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> and then I just got another job and then Houston came up and so getting back to Houston. <clears throat> um, so that idea that I was talking about originally in Houston was a spinoff of that original idea and I was like and I didn't I mean I didn't know how to make it happen <clears throat> and then I was led to um to outdoor ministry and I was like hey that's a cool thing and why didn't I think of that earlier so I <clears throat> um tried to make outdoor ministry happen um so I left Houston and I had, was enrolled in Montreat College and thought that that was where I was supposed to go. Um, so I went there and uh, and I had a house uh, where I thought I was going to be safe, but I was walking on eggshells and uh, and the and the couple was having major uh, divorce issues. Well, they weren't divorced, but they were having marital issues and were like, well, um, we no longer can have you here. So then I was forced to try to find a place to, <clears throat> um, to live. Um, and I needed a job and that wasn't happening. Um, I had, um, I was enrolled in Montreat, but I never went to classes yet. Um, and then all this erupted and this all happened like within weeks. <clears throat> and they didn't like what I was doing on their property because I mean I was trying to help them out at the same time I was there and so they gave me different things and I, I don't know I was doing the best of my ability but they didn't like what I was doing um, it wasn't my fault I, I did a good job and um, but <clears throat> so that fell through and I got home and had to take care of my grandmother who was just stroked out and so we had to feed her and I was in the worst job just about in my whole life with uh, mojos and doggy daycare and dogs crapping and peeing all over the place and I got bit uh, one time it split my knuckle open and another time um, got my arm um, it was a miserable job very loud very obnoxious mean dogs um, getting bitten, uh, dealing with all that, 
and getting um, not very many hours. Um, I had to actually have three or four jobs at that time. Um, so it's been really, I don't know, interesting. Um, and then, and tried to get my mom and my grandmother through that time. And, um, um, and I had, was living at my home at that point. Um, and um, <clears throat> then she died in January, and then I went to Idaho. Um, but looking, I mean, but I, I think it was about that time where I was looking back, trying to figure out why, well, I don't know, I think, I guess it was, it may have been in, uh, in Idaho or one of those jobs, but I had, um, it may have been later than this, but when I've looked back, I've realized that there was reasons why I was in certain areas at certain times. Like being in Minnesota was to get my dad, he had just, um, in 2008 or nine, the bottom fell out of the low income housing. And so I was there because trying to get him a newfound career, which he did find for short term. And then things went south with his um, with my stepmom, um, who didn't exactly see eye to eye. She was very neat and tidy and I wasn't, um, and she'd followed me, um, throughout the house and made life not fun for me. Um, and just like all of us, we all deal with inner demons and she was dealing with some and I, um, was not welcomed in her place and when I went up to Minnesota I was trying to find places in um, motel rooms and I was welcomed into a person's house for I can't remember it was like, it was like two or three weeks and then um, it was not fun I was basically living out of my car um, and had a storage unit um, but my dad did help pay for those bills um i saw god show up because there was um there was retirement money but it was money i had to use in order to keep afloat so i cashed that and used it um but god's used a lot of different scenarios in my life trying to get me to wake up and realize that i was not living the right life and <clears throat> Um, and I was placed in different places trying to help people and realize, <clears throat> have realized that there are people also in my life that even though I wasn't companion to them, they were put there to help me and to grow me, um, and to keep me going forward. Um, and I've helped a lot of family members, uh, moving a lot. I've helped them with their issues. Um, taking care of my grandmother um, and helping my mom move several times, um, helping my brother with his, well, no, I never helped him with moves, but um, I did live with him for several times. <clears throat> um, but, uh, <clears throat> so, but yeah, so, so yeah, I, I mean, my life, I'm still trying to figure out why things happen the way they happen. <clears throat> um, but I went to Idaho as a BLM ranger and, um, and started doing outdoor ministry with the church. And we did a summer, um, summer outdoor ministry and I, I, I enjoyed that and wanted to do more, um, and the um the church allowed me to do um like a bible study they incorporated um outdoor ministry and we did that for a few months and then i was told that the people didn't like what i was doing so i stopped and the whole group disbanded um but they were constant they were saying oh well uh we should get back together and you did good and blah 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 but um but yeah, it never went anywhere. Um, I, um, 
Um, at that point, I was dealing with a dad that had lost his will to live at that point. Um, he was battling inner demons and <clears throat> trying to figure out who he was, and I was trying to figure out who I was because I started seeing videos and realizing the way I was living was not the correct way I, I was supposed to live. I was starting to see videos where supposed Christians were still going to hell, um, where they were living what they thought was a good life, and um, it was turning out that um, it wasn't um, what God had wanted. Um, there were pieces that were, were wrong. Um, and it got me to really, uh, go after my, my, my issues. And I started turning off the TV a lot more, um, and trying to read. Um, I was trying to do outdoor ministry and I tried to make it work in Idaho. I, I tried to create it and found out that there was a guide service thing that was several hundred dollars that you had to get. And, um, and at that time I thought that I, I could make money and make, make a living off of this. And, um, but that never went anywhere. Um, and so, um, and I yet again, um, moved. Um, I, well, I mean, I, I tried to move to West Virginia, but that never happened. Um, but I, we ended up moving to Dallas, Texas, and I worked for um, a Salvation Army camp where I thought that that was where God was wanting me to let, be because uh, it, it felt like a good fit. I was like, oh, I'm doing ministry and I'm be talking about God and being able to do programs and what I want to do. And I was misled about the job. Um, they were claiming one thing and um, want me to be the director, then all of a sudden, they're like, well, we're, we're not gonna have you be the director, you're gonna actually just be a program, I think it was like a program assistant, so it was like two or three levels down from the director. So the person that I was supposed to be over was now over me, and um, he, I shouldn't badmouth anyone. We're not supposed to badmouth anyone, but um, he didn't fit the position. Um, he, they never allowed me to do what I knew how to do. I tried to create an after-school program and um, and do that type of thing. Um, it was also in Dallas where um, where I realized that I needed to get really serious about God, and so I was delving into the Bible a lot more. Um, I got rid of my gaming systems because um, I, I knew that they were wrong. Um, that's also where I got rid of um, CDs that, um, and that's where I really delved in and found out that um, the holidays that we were celebrating were demonic, like Halloween, um, extremely demonic. And it was where um, I realized the seriousness of the Bible. Um, and that's what those videos were showing. Um, <clears throat> they were showing a way of living that was different than what um, I had been taught. Like I had been taught, it's like, oh, well, you can, um, Jesus will save no matter what. And if you believe in him, um, everything's going to be fine and dandy. And then I, when reading the Bible more and more and more, uh, you come to find out that um, if you don't repent of your sin and keep it on a daily basis and do all these things against the Bible, um, then you're going to hell. And I was scared to death and saw videos of hell and how suicide le leads to hell. And um, that also was in Minnesota where um, I was shown a video where someone that committed suicide, which God was saying, because uh, I had a tendency tr to try to do suicide, um, kept like pulling a knife out and was like, oh, I'm done, I'm done. Um, life has not been easy. Um, I've been searching and searching and searching and I'm still searching. Um, and there's been lots of times when I've just wanted to give up.
Um, <clears throat> but in Texas, I mean, I gave up a lot um, in trying to figure out what to do. That's also where I tried to just turn off the TV and just read and do other things. <clears throat> but I kept finding myself stumbling and going back to TV going back to gaming and doing all kinds of different things. Um, <clears throat> um, so, um, but, um, but I was trying to lead a, a good life and there were times when I, I mean, yes, my sexual addiction was definitely still there. And I mean, it wasn't on and off. Like I, I, take a few months off and then it come, come would come back because I just couldn't control myself um, and it was it went on and on for many many years <clears throat> um, and I yeah it's sexual sin is very very difficult to get get rid of it's just like smoking or crack or drugs uh, it's just something that's very difficult to get rid of um, so, um, but in Texas, I was trying to do better, and, um, I tried to get involved with church, and, um, and trying to make the, the camp job work, and realizing that the, um, the funds were not, um, uh, being, um, were not enough money to afford the area. Or at least that's what I thought. Um, and I stupidly was arrogant and had a chip on my shoulder and left and walked out um, after a certain time because they um, found someone else to be the director. And um, and that was the, the end point. And I found out that they basically said that I would not ever... Um, go up on the ladder so I would stay at the 25,000 or 26,000 or I don't think it was that low but it was it was quite low um, <clears throat> that I would not go up on the ladder for two to three years and I would have to prove myself and um, I didn't fit the culture um, I, I saw some things that I didn't like and I was being prodded and pushed um, in ways I didn't like um, and so I was stubborn and arrogant and walked out right before summer camp and I should have stuck it out through camp uh, looking back at it um, I should have just made it through that time but I didn't I, I went to Colorado and worked for a resort um, and um, <clears throat> tried to live better um, and then was part of a, a school a gateway school and um, in Colorado I um, that's when my life um, where I, I, I knew I had to stop I saw a video of Dana Coverstone and it told of the next couple of, well, I thought it was the next couple of months where basically, um, where God was supposedly coming back and doing all this different things. And there's the possibility. It's like, okay, well, um, if you don't make this, then you're going to go through a, lo a whole lot of very bad things. <clears throat> and basically that put my life into a perspective. It's like, at that point I have, um, I wanted to get rid of everything that was not of God. Um, so I completely, <clears throat> um, I, I stopped my sexual sin at that point. I mean, I was like, okay, if I don't stop and the rapture happens, then I'm going to end up in the tribulation period and be tortured. And I didn't want that. I was like, okay, this, this is where it ends. I also at that time um, turned off the TV um, completely. Um, I found out that um, it was a demonic portal um, and it was allowing um, the demons to come in and harass me. Um, I 
uh, was told to shut off gaming. I was also told to um, not listen to worldly music anymore. Um, um, I was told to live a different life and to truly get into the Bible, which I did. I delved into it uh, more than I had ever done in my life. Um, and I learned a lot of new different things and new different ways. And God was seeing that I was truly um, trying to live for him. And um, I also um, fasted many times. Um, one, one time in order to prove if you will, um, that I wanted to have him and that, that was it. So I, I fasted for, well, I tried three, um, a three day fast that was just, was not Gatorade. And that made me really loopy. Um, I, I was on a water fast or not water, but I mean, I fasted from food, um, and kept running, which was really dumb. Don't, when you're on fasting, don't, I, I suggest not exercising at that point. Um, <clears throat> but, um, so I, I majorly stopped. Um, I also stopped doing gaming. I, God told me to, um, to not do gaming anymore. So I stopped that. Um, and I also started, um, to do more, uh, ministry videos that I all know I was putting off for quite some time. I, I started doing ministry videos and this type of thing and as well in Texas and I got some different things and I was learning about the Bible and uh, delving into different um, online training I guess of ministers and, and learning different things and um, I guess watching different videos and realizing that things were not uh, what they seemed um, and was being guided by God to get back on the path um, and then was really serious in Colorado like I said and, um, so I was spending time I, I didn't know at that point how to spend time and what God wanted um, and so um, so I just sat with my Bible and tried to go through books. Um, I went through, um, I, I also at that point realized that there are books in the Bible that should have remained in the Bible, but, um, they're no longer in the Bible, like, uh, second asterisk, Jasher, uh, Enoch, um, Jubilees and others. <clears throat> and I was truly listening more and more to people online that were true people of God who wanted to lead people the right way. <clears throat> I got a rapture dream. Oh, well, that was the second rapture dream. I got uh, uh, the original rapture dream was in 2012, 2013, right before Easter in Huntington, um, where I was driving and there were three flashes and, um, and my 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 lights went white but um when i was in colorado i had another rapture dream <clears throat> and i um said jesus was coming jesus was coming and i was <clears throat> taken home at that point and i could feel my body lifting which was pretty cool um, i never did see heaven i never did feel like outer space or anything like that but i could um feel something different um um, <clears throat> but, um, <clears throat> sorry, it's getting late. Um, but I've got to finish this. Um, <clears throat> so in Colorado, I got serious. And so I started trying to spend more time outdoors. Um, I was also told about, um, <clears throat> the gym that I was going to, that it was not a good place for me to be anymore. <clears throat> and uh, that was a hangout place of demons. Um, there was a lot of things like showing off, and um, there was a lot of women in uh, indecent outfits that were almost nude, just um, parading around. And I was, and I asked the staff why they were in those outfits and allowed to do that, and found out that. Uh, <clears throat> that's just how things were there. Um, so I, I walked out 
and canceled my membership at that point. Um, and I was like, I can't be around this. Um, I was truly trying to live for God, and I am living for God now. <clears throat> and then um, I couldn't, well, then COVID hit. Um, <clears throat> and I, I did ministry videos, or have been doing ministry videos and uh, environmental education videos because I was trying to do education videos for the, the school because we were trying to do an outdoor school and keep continuing so I did outdoor school videos and that got me into doing the ministry videos because I was like hey I'm, I'm doing a good job and um, just um, and so it got me into doing ministry videos a lot more and so um, that was pretty cool um, and so that job ended uh, with COVID and then the first job um, that took me in was in Florida for 4-H and so I moved to Florida and it was very ominous it was horrible weather on the way home uh, for two of the three days I had non-stop torrential downpours I dealt with um, winds that were gusting 60 to 70 miles an hour and knocking me and my trailer off the road uh, multiple times um, it was not a fun trip it was, and I, I, and I was dreading to be back home and having to be around um, things that I knew were not right. Um, sadly, um, I was put in situations where I knew I was gonna have to fight in tooth and nail, um, where my where people around me would not see eye to eye with what I felt. And um, so I got here and um, it's been a battle. 4-H um, didn't quite go the way I was hoping. Um, I got there and tried to work things out and they claimed that I would do environmental education and, um, <clears throat> and do um, different things <clears throat> and um, the things that they claim never amounted to anything um, <clears throat> there's no communication uh, there's no real support <clears throat> um, but in Colorado and um, and here because I'm here now in Florida um, I felt like there was preparation and I have seen various different things. I've seen several different rapture videos. The strangest one was I was raptured off of this world and saw and then appeared on Planet Lego and these Legos were dancing and all kinds of different things. That was strange. Um, and but i've had other rapture dreams um and dreams where i knew things were changing um like there was this one dream where um where i was in a room and it was like it felt like prestigious and people were dressed up and then there was like a sniper or something on whatever and then i felt everything flip upside down and i could literally feel everything flip and it was just um, and I think that was God's way of saying that things are, are flipping. Um, and, um, and I've gotten different videos that I, I'm, I understand now. Like there was one where an apartment and I could see like this, the sun setting and the clouds were flying past the window and it was an apartment. And I think God was trying to tell me um, to get out more and to just be his hands and feet. Um, but I've gotten a lot of different <laughs> prophetic messages like a big bear attacking us, which is Russia. It hadn't come true yet. The rapture dream obviously has not come true yet. Um, my, lately, um, I've gotten a, a wave. Well, there were two dreams that were wave dreams and then two clouds. And I know you're going to be like, oh, well, you, you misinterpreted the cloud. No, I didn't. Uh, the cloud was like it, I mean, I'm, I'm down at the beach and this cloud was literally taking over the entire, well, not the entire sky, but a large portion of the sky. And you could literally see, see it starting like 
it started like this. So it was, it was one cloud where it was going the the whole way, but the like there was the um, like there were different segments of it in the first segment. So it started out like this, and then you, the next segment, it was it was slightly um, more like this, and then the third segment was further, and then the fourth segment was literally it crashing. Um, so it it was clearly a wave. <laughs> Um, and I got confirmation because there were two other prophetic people, um, that, um, have seen, uh, wave dream, but, um, I've had to fight tooth and nail, um, <clears throat> because God was, has been testing me. Um, he's asked me to potentially stay behind during, uh, the tribulation and I've kind of agreed to it. Um, one of the dreams at, or in my consciousness, I saw a gun barrel pointed at my face. Don't know when this is happening. Um, but I, I don't know if I'm going to be raptured or if God's going to use me in this time. Um, I believe the rapture could be at any time. Um, I was told to do this testimony thing. Um, yes, I, I mean, everyone has to go through different sins and whatever through their life. Um, but I realize how serious the Bible is about sin. Um, and I was living a double life as I, as you probably can tell by now. Um, and now I'm sitting on the porch late at night trying to go through a dream. Um, <clears throat> so, um, but I've, I've been trying to do, a, um, all these different, um, videos and I've tried to write out different things on WordPress and in on Facebook of what God has been revealing to me um, about how our body is the potentially the third temple um, and to not take the um, the so-and-so in your arm <laughs> um, hopefully you got my drift um, because I believe that that's part one of the Mark of the Beast. Um, but um, this is my testimony. Um, it's been a life of, I don't know, I mean, you may go, well, this guy's just been living it up. It's like, well, for the last 15 to 20 years, I've gone all over the creation. I have not known who I was. I um, have always not felt right um i have left too many jobs and i've hated it um i have worked for many bosses and done wrong thing for too many too many of them um so don't do what i did um try to make things work if you can <clears throat> but if there's no way then yeah keep going um i don't know if there's someone out there that needed to hear this um but um you are loved. God does love you. And um, I know that I wasn't abused. I mean, I had to go through a divorced family and that type of thing. But everyone has their different things that they have to go through. Um, some of us abuse. Some of us um, drugs. Some of us sexual sins. Some of us um, have to live in different countries. Um, I don't know who's who's gonna hear this, um, but don't live a double life. Don't try to hide your your sin because it's not hidden. God knows everything, and one day, which is really scary if you think about it, just imagine all the record books of everything you've ever said, thought, done, said, whatever, being opened up before God, who knows everything. And if your sins are not accounted for and repented, in other words, God, God has uh, not covered your sin, you're not going the right way. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you. And the remnant is a very small portion of people. Um, as I look now with my new, new eyes and new heart and new soul that God has given me, um, it's um, definitely different. Um, God is serious about his word. He wants people that truly love him and will do what he wants them to do. 
um, yes, you can mess up and you can repent and he'll be he'll, he'll be fine. But there's a point, and it's in Isaiah, it's in Jeremiah, it's in um, many of the Old Testament books, where basically um, they have eyes to hear but don't hear anymore. They have eyes to see, or not eyes, but ears to hear but can't hear. Um, but there are many places, well, Jeremiah, what is it, Jeremiah 16 or 17 says stuff like this, where basically it's like, I, I'm done, and um, and they will be ever listening but never hearing, um, they'll be ever knowing but never, um, you get, catch my drift, but, um, uh, I love you. Um, I, God bless everyone. Um, sorry if this was long-winded. Um, this is, um, yeah, sexual sin is very difficult to get over. Um, but you gotta come to a point, it's like, okay, well, if I don't stop what I'm doing right now, and the rapture happens, and I haven't repented of, of it, then I'm going the opposite way. Um, and if you are in the tribulation, um, this the hand of God gets taken off and the spirit well I've heard that the spirit also goes as well and death goes bye bye <laughs> um, there is not any death and if you think that your head's going to just chop off or you can just be shot in the head and that'll be the end of it um, that's not well I mean that will happen um, but what the videos I've heard are seriously out there um, like I've heard one video or several that basically say that they're gonna break every bone in your body and then they're gonna blow you alive um, as a torture um, the stuff that you heard at Auschwitz where they gassed people and did certain things and injected chemicals and did things like pull out their eyes and whatever um, that will be you um, times ten um, so I would advise getting right with God now. Um, thank you for listening. Um, God bless you all. See you on the flip side. And please don't think anything badly of me. Uh, yes, I've had to battle. Um, and I've lived a double life. Um, I thought I was good in God's eyes. And that was far from the truth. Um, take care.